Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Channel Legends video. Guys, we are joined by the infamous YST. <laughs> uh, YST, how are you doing? <laughs> Not too bad, man. It's been a little while since we've been on the channel, I think. Maybe since yeah. like January or something from the free to play. But yeah, really cool to be back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, cool. Look, I mean, we're involved in this kind of like creator challenge for Hydra. And yeah. I thought it'd be really cool, actually, just to go in and kind of do a bit of a breakdown of the different teams that have been chosen and like why champions were chosen and, and why they were chosen for a specific role. So I think mm -hmm. it can just help everybody else that's trying to build Hydra teams right now, you know, to think in the same sort of way. Um, I guess for you, like, you know, we've, we've done clan boss challenges together before. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about the kind of whole Hydra vibe? For me as a player, like speaking personally, I've never been too into Hydra. I think it comes down to not having specific champions to enable auto compositions, like the Necmofars, the Chris, or like yeah. Lady Kimmy's. There's just specific components that I've always missed. And it's like, I can still do the Nightmare Hydra, maybe just not as good as some other people. Mm. But yeah, I, th I think for me, it can be a breath of fresh air because we've done so much clan boss before. So take me out of my comfort zone a bit. And even if I don't win, hopefully can like make a good showing for some champions that i really enjoy that i've seen a few people surprised like when i mentioned snick track and coroners yeah, and especially yeah. you you was like good luck with that mate like well, keep... I, I just i just felt like i mean yeah. maybe maybe we pull up the draft because i felt like there were just other options that i would have picked that's all like mm -hmm. and, and it's probably because i don't have coroner so i've never used him in that sort of role and stuff but yeah um i mean definitely i was feeling the heat there's there's eight of us in this competition which basically means there's, there's 50 champions that are, are going to be selected, two yeah. banned, 48 picked. And, you know, we're probably all used to using our own champions in our own Hydra team. So, you know, when it comes back to, crap, now I need to find someone else to do a similar job. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like the Clambus Challenge. It becomes really tough. You're like, you're, yeah. you're scrambling to find like people that do specific things. Um, I mean, I guess we'll just have a quick touch on this, that the overall tournament, we will talk about the kind of the picks in a bit more detail and kind of how we felt the the whole kind of like pick and, and ban phase thing was going the draft was going on yst's channel and i'll link that down below um but ultimately we've got eight of us in this competition and it's a, a straight knockout so seeds are going to be going up against each other i think i got seeded did i get seeded like third I, I'm not too sure, you know, because... We, They're out of their minds, if they think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the way is, when you see those plus fours and you put the maximum damage bandana on, and you've yeah. won everything in the past, you're getting those votes, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why it's yeah. gone down. But basically, we had this kind of like whole pick and... You know, I guess pick and ban. It's not so much ban, because yeah. two champions were just straight banned, and then we were able to kind of like do this snake draft pick. Um, and we've ended up with our teams of six each. What... What I've done is just kind of like broken down where I where I see they fit because I think this will be what helps other players that are trying to build a Hydra team, and this is definitely like the way I was I was kind of like building my I guess my selection of champions. Yeah, when I was like, who do I think that I might want to pick? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I've still got the uh, I've still got it on my desk. <laughs> it's like I was scribbling yeah. stuff out as I was going, but basically I was I was like grouping champions into roles and i don't know yeah. is that the way you kind of think about hydra yeah it's the same way that i think about um even with the faction games or the clan boss draft as well it's always having all of the key components is the most important thing and i've always yeah. written down the roles that i need so i don't just go for top tier champions like choosing a husk and then a royal guard and then a geomancer it's just too much dps in one team like for yeah. an example so it's good to have that knowing which heads are available uh, you need the provokes you need the decrease speed and all of the vital stuff and then just try to get the best one at that time that you actually have on your account but with, as you said with the eight people in this tournament so many champions it's like every single time someone mentioned one off the list off the list off the list yeah this is it yeah yeah, yeah. and you're, you're kind of like you like please let me get to this champion like yeah. I, I i actually <laughs> yeah. chose um like cupidus and venus right because i've got mm -hmm. strong cupidus made sense for me to do it but i wonder if i picked them quite early because maybe people were not thinking of that as an option at all i don't know yeah because um, the trouble is you take stuff off the board early that you want but then it takes so long to get back to you to get your picks again that you're like Damn, now I'm, I'm, like, I'm scrambling. I'm scrambling to find champions that I actually want. 
Um, yeah, no, I agree. Like even me, like I think in the second picks, I was choosing my snick tracks and my coroners because I needed to bag the decrease speed and yeah. also the um, the provokes. And I thought, Provoke, uh, yeah, at least if I can get one swap out, there is some other provoke options still available that I could still put into the team. But yeah. I just needed to make sure I had that core focus first of ones that I'm familiar with, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, I just I'm just trying kind to of like lay out the way I feel like people were thinking here. So. Basically, and, and I think this is a really good rule of thumb for anyone building a Hydra team, like two definite damage dealers. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you've basically, and, and near enough, everybody in this list, pretty much everybody actually, has got a burner and then a straight hitter in terms of damage. So, you know, if, if somebody gets eaten, the straight hitter with, you know, ideally enemy max HP or just an absolute nuke, can try and free your person that's been eaten as soon as possible, yeah? Yeah. Um, and, and looking at this, like Nub Raid's version of that really is Ninja because he, he does burn, but he actually pops the burn, so it's like really quick damage. Mm -hmm. I've got the Husk, Deadwood got the Royal Guard. Um, Bashal can kind of do that as well. People like, I'm, I'm interested to see what Taras does. I really do not know what yeah, his I've damage never, level's going to be I've, like here. I've never seen him in Hydra. I'm actually so interested to see if he can do it with that, but... Yeah, I mean, your your team is probably the only one that doesn't have what I would class as the absolute pop of damage. Mm -hmm. Like Missionarchy, lots of damage, but over time, basically teaming up with other people. So Missionarchy is probably your best bet of freeing someone that's been eaten, I would say, do you think? Um, I, I guess think Walking Tomb actually I think pops Walking Tomb well. drags A1 of Detonations is the reason yeah, why I chose true. him. Because um, because we've got so much burns going on with Mishinagi and him, and his yeah. is non-resistible as well, so I can tank him with resistance and HP and stuff. And then he could just pop out his A1 and just free any head. So Yeah, good point, actually, yeah. yeah. It was a good then, option to have. So, so once you've got the kind of the person that can just do, like, real quick DPS, mm -hmm. almost everybody else, again, has just got an AoE HP burner, which is really good damage over time. So you've kind of got that, that nice blend of consistent damage going on and then smack of damage when you need it. Um, so like Sakia, Tumisia. Wait, wait, uh, what, what, did, what did you call her? <laughs> Tumisia. No, Sakia. Sakia, yeah? What do, you, what do you call her? Sissia. Sissia, do you? <laughs> Sakia. Is it okay? <laughs> I, want, I wonder which one's right. I'm, Guys, you got to let us know in the comments. <laughs> I'm rarely right with this stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard yeah. that one before. I'm not going to lie. All <laughs> oh, right. Damn. <laughs> Oh, um, funny, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, similar sort of thing. Actually, Cold Brew, yeah. interestingly, has got like two damage dealers and then a burner in Teela. Mm -hmm. And it's same sort of thing with Scratch, like two damage dealers. Oh, no, not Scratch, sorry. Uh, was it Deadwood? Mm -hmm. No. No, I don't know. I'm sure someone... Oh, yeah, no, sorry. Odd One actually has got two damage dealers and then his Provoker is his also a dealer. very high damage dealer. And actually, his support is also a very high damage dealer. So... When I was like going through these teams, like trying to fill where do people fit their different roles, it was quite interesting because Odd One's team stands out to me as like potential nuke. Yeah, mm -hmm. you've got like very hard hitting people in those support roles, which yeah. um, could end up being quite a game changer. Yeah, his is very underrated. I think like even with the polling system, there was like a few like I think Cold Brew is very underestimated here, especially like having the Crisk in there and yeah. The Teelers, the Bashals. You're, you're, the you're up against Cobra, aren't you? I think so, yeah. Damn. So it's going to be a tough first one, but I'm up for the task. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm up against Deadwood. And I mean, Deadwood actually went quite epic crazy. You know, he's got like half his team is epics here. Yeah. Dithy was a, a bit of a weird pick. I don't know if he's going to end up sticking with Dithy. Yeah, I was, I was doing a collab with him yesterday night as well. And I was speaking, I was mm. asking him, why Dahi? And so it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to pump out a bunch of damage here. But I think it's mainly for the drop defense to pair the weakening of Geomancer. To yeah. Be the, the thing, or I don't know. Yeah. Because ideally, when we're building our own like clan boss teams, if you've got someone like a Geo, it's really nice to pair Geo with somebody like the Shamal to just try and like boost mm -hmm. his turns as quick as you can. And obviously, when you're doing a draft type of setup, yeah, we've all got champions doing particular roles, but can't necessarily pick the ones you want that, that kind of pair because other people are picking them away from like under your feet yeah um, is, is there anyone that you would have been like i really wish i'd got that champion to fill that role is it is there one that stands out for you 
Um, the ones that they raised is ones that I had the opportunity to choose. Uh, so maybe Bivold over Coroner yeah. would have been one. Bivold's but great. The, the, the reason why I didn't choose Bivold is he brings in everything else he brings, Snick Track already brings to the team. Whereas, oh, does with Cor- yeah, because he's got the leech and he's got the shields, right? And Snick yeah. Track has shields and Snick Track has. Uh, I've never leech. really used Snick Track. I'll be interested to see uh, how you get on with him, actually. Just the Snick Track. Is a... Yeah, like, Snick is, Track. It mainly is... decreased speed, sort of, dude. No, he's got a protected shield, so he can't get stolen. Ah, oh, okay. So, right. and he's also got um, reflect damage. He's got decreased speed. He's got decreased attack through poison cloud as well because it's before attacking. And then it's going to pair well with the protected strength in a Marishka as well. So no matter if a bad RNG happens and then Mischief tries to steal my buffs, I at least know that strength and shield is always going to be on my team and it cannot be removed. So that yeah. was what I was trying to create there for the longer fights. I mean, it's interesting. We've all got a reviver in the team in case someone goes down. Like you know, the... <laughs> But your reviver <laughs> needs to die to revive the team, right? She doesn't just straight revive, does she? No, it has to be killed, and then she revives the whole team. But then she can't come back. She can't come back. Yeah. But yeah. The thing so that's, is, she stood with another reviver, like on her own. Yeah. I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous for that. I'm planning to not. <laughs> the team that I always build is damage reduction, damage mitigation. Yeah. That's my thing. And Your my, just never my die, plan yeah. is, I'm not dying. That's my plan. <laughs> so that head. See. Have you yeah. done a couple of like practice runs already? I've done one run, and I had to cut it off because it was too long. I'll just oh, say wow. that. <laughs> nice. it got so long i was like 40 50 minutes into the battle i was like yo i feel sorry for this stream man <laughs> yeah we're gonna be like four battles deep <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it'll be interesting we'll see but i mean it's, it's interesting because everyone's got a different type of reviver that brings something else like you know you've got uko potentially is also the provoker for jedi if he's in if she's in um provoke gear mm-hmm. you've got someone like your barishka that's really more of a support champion that can revive mm-hmm. um you know, you've got people like Duchess, which is like, I'll revive the whole team. Don't worry, fellas. Um, you're all good. <laughs> plus, plus, I'm going to uh, protect you from the head of Torment. Yeah, which is one of the few champions that are doing that. Mine's a single target reviver, but with a it's good enough, amount of yeah. health. And she's also bringing a lot of support type stuff. So I was surprised if you're Marta, honestly. Yeah, Marta might be taking a bit of a dive for someone else. But honestly, like, I, I really needed decrease attack so so in mm-hmm. terms of like support for me Marta's probably a cross between the, a provoker and a support champion because i really wanted someone that bought me an aoe decrease attack to help me deal with the head of wrath mm-hmm. and i thought at the same time if i can get someone who does something else that makes some sense then that would be good and i was kind of torn between iron brago as an option like again Ooh. aoe decrease attack yeah. got to provoke also brings everybody just this massive chunk of defense, mm-hmm. which if you're building out people like Cupidus and Husk for damage, it's hard to also give them enough defense to stay alive well. Yeah. So that might be an option. And um, I'm also looking at Lord Champfoot. So oh, okay. The AoE Lord decrease dudes. attack, AoE yeah. decrease accuracy. So I don't need as much resistance, which means I could get my player power a bit lower. Um, also giving like decreased speed on the enemy head. So this role... For me, this position for me is like still a bit up for grabs. Have you have you not thought about someone like Sigmund the High Shield? I don't own him actually. He oh, would have been, is he? Yeah, he's, he would he's have been literally he's on the he's got the shields, the provokes, decreased attack, removes buffs, and his yeah. passive is crazy for Hydra as well. He would have been. A I would have. I he yeah. actually like people were calling him out, and I was like, yeah, I don't own him. You didn't go um, for that fusion. That's surprising. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know. I just looked. I I think it was one of those fancier break type of times yeah i'm like that at the moment with jetney i was like nah there's too much going on at the moment and yeah then with this auto battle feature all crushed i was like i'm done man <laughs> <laughs> yeah but this yeah. this is definitely a role that i'm struggling with because yeah. i really want aoe decreased speed as well and i don't have it and yeah there's i can't see anybody that does the two together you know that's either not already taken or or um that's good yeah. enough and i definitely why... need decreased attack it's like my revives and stuff is just not it's not that you know, not that great. I don't have strength and I don't have any really like like you've got a lot of mitigation. I don't. I don't really have I've got some shields from Pimfroy, which is good. Mm-hmm. But I don't have strength and I don't have, you know, anything built in to keep these people alive other than you got no other sure protection as well. Out there. Uh, this is <laughs> Yeah, this I mean another boss. one I thought about was a Serga. I was actually so, I was contemplating her as well. She's pretty good because she does have AoE decreased speed, right? If I'm not mistaken. No, she doesn't. Think... 
doesn't because... have decreased speed, but she's got AoE decrease attack if the enemy's attack is higher than defense, which places a 30% places a 30% decreased speed debuff and a decreased defense on targets whose attack is equal to or lower. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's decreased speed on the defensive guys, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I looked at the Hydra heads. Every single one has got a higher attack than defense. So mm -hmm. you would put the decrease attack on, but you'd also bring ally protection and strengthen. So yeah, def definitely everyone I've spoken about there probably gives me more than Marta because Marta, Marta's value would be in that counter attack, and Cupidus is going to counter attack always every yeah. single time he gets hit. So. Yeah, Marta's going to go, but it's just like which of those different subs is going to be most worth. Um, it's a sticky one, man. This is why Stick Track and Coroner I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, is there any, anyone in your team that you're like, yeah, they might go? Oh, only The only one is Coroner for potentially somebody like a, a Morley de Tankard. Yeah. That's, that, what, it, it's something that's who I thought about. you would. It would be a better pick. This is I don't I don't have her at the moment. I'd have to sacrifice oh, right. champions to get it from the Oh yeah, but you can. I can get her. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's one of those ones where I wanted to bag someone I know I have anyway, just so I can yeah. look at my account to see, oh, should I can I sacrifice these? And I can't make it like, work. Brilliant, yeah. by the way. I don't know if you use oh if you don't have her, you wouldn't have used her, but mm -hmm. she can really like pump turn meter as well as doing that provoke. Yeah. I don't know the... if she'll be as consistent on provoke as coronars. But it could be. She is this... consistent. Corrin is really good because he's got decreased attack and decreased defense to help out a mission arc in case his doesn't go out or if he gets speared or something. Yeah. So it's just like two forms of having it. So it's up all of the fight so it doesn't drop off. So, and also he attacked because you've got the decreased speed out on all the Hydra heads all the time. He's always going to counter attack without Manaya. So he's basically running the passive the same way without needing Manaya on the team. So I'm getting quite a lot of damage from Coronar as well. But. Someone like yeah. Morley would be boosting more damage for someone like a Mishinaki because she feels the turn meter every single time you hit, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's a hit and miss. I'm still deciding. I've got like a day left. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably worth calling out because from this group, there were some champions that I couldn't believe. I mean, Ninja was picked super late, mm -hmm. but there were some champions that I couldn't uh, believe were not picked. So Morley being one of them, she was on my list but didn't really fit my last role. Yeah. Um, there was Rogni. Like... Rockney's so clutch for Hydra in terms yeah. of the amount of protection that he brings and stuff, and he's got a protected shield as well. Yeah, he is really good. I just feel like, do you know when you're trying to fulfill certain roles? Like for me, like I'm probably going to get bashed in the comments here, but I would prefer a Snake Track over an Underpriest because. Would you? Interest. I'm so interested to see what you do with this guy because I yeah. can't believe that. Like it's it's because people so underestimate good. because if in his kit, I'm just going to read it out before I. Well, you, while you're looking, like Rockney cleanses yeah. your team. Yep. Removes um removes buffs from enemies, right? Yep. He has got an HP burn, he's got mm -hmm. shields which can't be removed, and he empowers shields. Yep. And when he gets hit, your team do damage to the enemy. Yep. Like he's insanely good. He is really good, but I prefer him for clan boss. He's very good in the Hydra as well, but when you're trying to fulfill different roles, I think Snick Track does it a little bit better for me because if you're planning to have block, it depends on this composition. Let me just rephrase. So if 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 I'm going for a block buffs team, I've got two Hanarak, one of the best block buffs champions in the game. Yeah, I don't need true. to rely on stripping buffs with an underpriest Brogni, right? Um, increased attack, I've already got that covered as well, but I don't really need it as well with Mishinaki being defense based and Walking Tomb Dream being HP based. So having that up is not going to really help my team out. Um, yeah, true. I've got decreased attack from Snick Track. I've got decreased speed. I've also got a protected shield, very similar to Under Priest. I've got ally protection, reflect damage, and a bonus reflect damage from Snick Track as well, which actually deals a good amount of damage. So I think overall, Snick Track plays more roles for the team that I'm using than someone like an Under Priest. It just depends, right? But yeah. I'm surprised he wasn't chosen from like someone else, though. So that. Nothing's been sold. What is going on? I with think Snick Track is so underrated, man. I don't know how people just everyone. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't. I don't own him, okay. and he's super yeah. cool looking, right? But I mean, this is the decrease speed is actually massive as well. It's, AOE it's decrease the, it's speed, the, the, so the decrease big. speed and the protected shield sure. in the same ability, so you don't have to wait for two cooldowns. Yeah, that's what's so powerful. And then the ally on protection, and he reflects the leech as well. So I've got leech in the team on top of that. So. Because he's got the leech in the passive whenever he's hit, or anyone under ally protection's hit, or reflect damage, sorry. 
Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, I'm. I'm super. Yeah. Like, I'm psyched to see what you do with him, honestly, because. Yeah, I mean, this kid. I've always. I mean, it's not like I, I've always rated him high for Hydra. I've never, never yeah. had him to use him, but yeah, definitely. Like the a protected shield is actually massive. That is massive. I mean, when when we're talking brutal here, are you building high resistance anywhere? Is that is that kind of like part of your um, your vibe? Kind of. Yes and no. Um, I've not. Really I've got not... so much player power to deal with. Resistance yeah. pushes player power up. By the way, but... like not. Normally you would want it on certain people, but yeah, I built the team first and I was above 500k. I was like, damn. So I've had to yeah. take some of my mischief tank stuff off, which is fine because Corrin is getting it most of the time anyway, and I don't really care about him having much buffs. As long but, as Corrin can't direct it, can he? Like some he champions, can because he places it with the with the provoke. He places a block debuff and increased defense on himself. Oh, he does. Yes, so yes, he, yes. He's getting the extra buff with the block debuff, which I don't have in my team, so he's always targeted. Oh, that's super handy. Like, I don't yeah. have someone that can do this. This is why Corrin is such an underrated champion as well. It's like, he's not just the provoker. You can use him as that mischief tank um, yeah. in specific teams. And he's got all of the other stuff as well. So, Which again, like, we, we've not really spoken about it on this group. But that's there's, there's quite a few champions that do that. Mm -hmm. Like, Skull Lord was the one that I wanted. Because he would, again, give me decrease attack, a provoke. And you can direct a mischief tank onto one person. Yeah. Because, he again, he puts up one buff on himself. Coronar does basically the same thing, but with a bit more. Actually, I use Stole Lord in my main teams. It looks like Coronar's potentially a better version. Um, yeah, it's it really depends. Like people just think that Coronar's not that good without Manaya. Whereas if you've got the debuffs up in his passive, for, because it says always counterattacks when Manaya's on the team. But if you've yeah. got, um, if you just bring up, I can't remember what it says in the passive. And then if, if targets yeah, yeah. under decreased attack, decreased defense, or decreased speed, he's going to counterattack anyway, and we're always going to have those up. So yeah. we don't need Manaya in the team to proc that. So he's always attacking. He's always placing Provoke in a Taunt set or Provoke so set. So I was going to say, so you yeah. put him in a Provoke set to get yeah. additional Provoke chances, yeah? yeah? Yeah, with all of his abilities being AoE and cycling around with the A2 just in case that falls off or doesn't land, it's very, very consistent. There's little pockets where it falls off. It's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, look, we're going to be doing our playoffs, right? So the first, the first battles come through on... Was well, tomorrow. First battles tomorrow and then... I think I'm actually... Are you in tomorrow? Tomorrow's group? I, I think I'm in tomorrow's one with all the beastie boys like Scratch and Old Bruce. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's going to be scary time. And, but And then my first fight is going to be on Friday. So they're, yeah. they're both like scheduled for 8 p.m. UTC on Deadwood Jedi's site. I'll link everybody's YouTube's down below. You should go and check out. Everybody's kind of doing content on this. But, I mean, I just call it out now, dude. Who do you think has got the team that should win this competition? Scratch is going to win. Uh, I want to back myself a little bit. I've done the trust talk before, and this time I've got to be humble, know what's coming. And yeah. especially knowing that Scratch, if I happen to win, I'm not sure if I'm going to beat Cold Brew. It's going to be actually pretty 50 50, I think, um, in terms of that. I can't call it. But I think. I, I feel the same for me versus Deadwood. I, I can't call which way this is going. It is really tough, man. Uh, but then it, if I go into the next round, I think Scratch is going to be. I, I, I can't see me out damaging Scratch. It really depends how much he can do with that Trunda, but... Yeah, like, uh, this is the thing, right? So I've seen some insane damage from the, this type of... It, it's, it's almost picked, like, the perfect comp for this damage, hasn't he? He's got Lydia drop defense weakened. Mm -hmm. He's got uh, increased attack from Duchess. He's got the absolute cannon from Trunda. And as long as he pops some heads with that... Kaima resets, they go again, and then Trunda just unleashes all sorts of hell. Like it is. I was actually surprised damage. he didn't. I was thinking he could have chosen a Yameko instead of Supreme Gallic and had a double reset with the Trunda. Could have been worse. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, thinking. but you you have yeah. to have though. Yeah. Two ways to do damage. Don't like we spoke about mm -hmm. at the start. You you need if Trunda gets eaten, which she will eventually. I think if if they're not all dead the whole time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know, man. This this is a very <laughs> This tip, like, I think out of the rest of them, I would struggle to call who's going to win every battle. Like, all the teams are yeah. just like well made up. They've all got the right type of components. There's no, there's no outliers where I'm like, I don't really understand how that team's going to work. They all work, mm. but Scratch's team yes. is straight up scary. Yeah, man. Like, I, I don't know. I might, I might run away that stream. You might not see me. <laughs> It'll just be my chair. Yeah. <laughs> like honestly, if um. Like, because we get to steal someone else's champion, don't we? If yeah, if we win, 
Like, if Scratch wins, I think he would struggle to steal anyone. To steal anyone. Like, I don't know who he'd steal. Because that team just makes so much sense as it is. Yeah, it's true. I don't know, man. Even me, I don't know who I could steal from Cold Brew because I don't have any of them. I don't have a Sifi. Oh, do you not? I don't no. have a Krisk, and I don't need a Nishak Vermin oh, Lord. I would happily take that Krisk, I'll tell you that. You could have, you could have had the Krisk. You chose the husk. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what... I, I got baited into that a bit, and I was like... I, my, my other two were like Tahanarak or Krisk, and I was like... Oh, should I just bag some damage? But there's so many damage options. What a crazy... I don't know, man. Husk is going to do some work, though. Husk is going to do some work. Yeah, to be um, fair, he was in a bad situation going first as well because you had to wait 16 picks for your next one. Yeah, so it's like, so long. If you're just thinking, if all of the damage goes in that 15 picks, you're done for. Yeah, so, I, I kind of thought everyone was just going to be banging damage dealers to start, and they didn't. They were going the other way, and I was like... I'm sitting here with Husk <laughs> thinking like, oh, man, uh, I haven't picked any support. Ended up with Pinthroy. Guys, it's no, good. It's good. Pinthroy is actually really good. I put him on the rated list. I think he's. It'll be, yeah, I'm he's actually good. excited to hear that, see that dude. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Look. Anyway, we're gonna do another collab right now on YST's channel where we go into the draft in a bit more detail. Come and join us there uh, and make sure you you subscribe to this good fella. Um, YST, thanks for coming on, man. Oh, anytime. I'm sure I'll see a lot of you. Hey, <laughs> gaming, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Look at the games in awesome. Moscow. Boof. I'm gonna win this. I yeah, hold on. <laughs> You got a maximum it's damage on. on. It's on. Oh my god! <laughs> well, guys, let us know as well in the comments. Who do you think has had the best draft? I'm actually interested to know what you guys think. For sure. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I've been Hell Hades. That's YST. We'll see you later.